I think I'd always been interested in um, the dialogue between countries and languages. I grew up between different languages and between different countries in my own family life and my own experience. I studied and lived in a number of different continents before I was, say, 25. And so uh, when I was looking at how I would continue my work and my studies, I actually didn't train formally thinking that I would become an interpreter, uh, but I found that in initially every other road was a narrower one. And I ended up with a law degree and I ended up studying political economy, but in the end I missed the broad, vast expanse of international conference interpreting, where you don't know from one month to the next uh, all the things you're going to have to learn and the challenges and the rewards of taking your mind to different places, different languages, different subjects, and, and working alongside some, some very talented people. Yes, it's not a pleasant memory. It, I do remember it was in New Orleans, maybe 12 years ago or 14 years ago. I can't even tell you what Codex Committee it was, but the United States was uh, where I live. The United States was the host country of that committee. And uh, I worked alongside people who had already done that same committee in previous years. So I was kind of like the baby uh, or junior interpreter in the team being guided. They told me what documents, of course, I didn't know what a, a CRD was, and I you know, was just trying to not get lost in the sea of documents, acronyms, uh, concepts, science, terminology, the names of the people, the accents of the countries, um, and, and the bigger purpose of what Codex Elementarius was. Uh, so anyway, it was for sure a challenge. Uh, a rewarding one, and one that I knew I couldn't do without the support of all of the other people on the team. The, the challenge of CCPR, I think, is just the, the fact that it's about something that's so ordinary and present for all of us, like food and food safety, but it involves, at least for people like me that don't have a particular chemistry background, a lot of uh, toxic toxicology information, a lot of chemical compounds. And so putting all of that together with something that you think you should always be able to remember, the names of fruits, groups, subgroups, plants, animals, you've heard about them, but you don't necessarily know them in all of the languages that they're going to be mentioned. So that's one challenge. And then I think just all of the ongoing work that uh, it takes before you arrive here. So much work happens before the actual committee meeting where everything is being interpreted live that we come a little bit late to the party you know so and there's no way to read everything that is going to be referenced at a meeting so you just have to uh, fasten your seatbelt and go as fast as you can <laughs> not get left behind well I think codex matters because in 2023 we, the world is so globalized that we always just assume that somebody else is taking care of making sure that when we go into a supermarket or when we decide to order something even on an app and the food is going to arrive at our home, that it's going to be safe. We just assume that that's the case. And Codex matters because that assumption rests on some scientific principles that if they weren't seriously taken by the producers and the regulators and the shops and the uh, merchants that sell us food, it wouldn't matter, right? So we'd like to depend on it. We want to be able to continue to depend on it. And technology is always evolving. People are always growing new foods, finding new ways to market them. And if it weren't for what happens in these rooms, that wouldn't be possible.